Let's talk about the the famous <laughs> <laughs> incident at the. Uh, the New Music, music Seminar. I think that was, uh, they even depicted it in the um, Straight Outta Compton. Straight Outta Compton movie. Yeah. So let's well, talk, talk about that. Well, I will say this. People think it was that we was NWA goons. It's far from that. What, what took place was when we put out Living Like Hustlers, the first week Living Like Hustlers came out, um, they did a big feature on us in the LA Times. So we sold like 160, 180,000 records. You know, and um, I want to say Gomac had said, they asked him, you know, what's the difference between y'all and like Ice Cube or whatever, right? And I don't know why they, the reporter asked that. He said, well, the difference between us is kind of like I told you before, like, we're not a boy band. We're not a made up group. We hustled, you know, and everything we talk about on Live Like Hustlers, either we went through it or somebody around us, you know, we were associated with it, right? Mm -hmm. Not like Ice Cube that like, you know, write stories and he went to school in the Valley and never did that at the time. So L.A. Times asked Ice Cube, what did he think about what we said? He said New Jacks from Pomona should only talk about the 10 freeway because that's the only thing that's going through it. Now, that didn't bother me as much. But when you add Easy e call in my mama house early in the morning and saying, because we getting ready to do a show. Yeah. You know, he's saying, hey, man, that dude just clowned y'all. How you going to let that buster clown y'all like that? I was like, what you talking about? He said, go get an L.A. Times. Because we in Pomona, so, you know, I said it's Progress Bulletin, right? We don't have L.A. Times, so we got to go to a big supermarket to get L.A. Times. So so I go, I drive, I, I go across town, get the L.A. Times. I look at it, and, and I read the story. I read what he say. I say, you know I'm going to fuck him up tonight at the show if he show up. <laughs> Well, he just happened to show up with Rolling Stones magazine. So when he walked in with Rolling Stone magazine, this is at at the Celebrity Theater, our first concert. It's Gangstar, CMW, and Low Profile at the time, Dub C and DJ Aladdin, right? Had a group at the yeah. time. And Coolio was a hype man at the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is how far we going back. It's 1989, 88, I mean, 1990. Okay. Right? So... He walk in with Rolling Stone like he planned to come support Dub and, and, and um, DJ Aladdin and Toons. Um, rest in peace. Um, so, me and him in the hallway. So I say, man, what's the fuck's up with that newspaper shit, man? Because we really didn't say anything but the truth about him. Like, hey, man, you know how we cut? We cut real. You, you yeah. bitch-ass motherfucker. I, I did like that. He said, you a bitch-ass motherfucker. So, at this time, all of the security rushes, right? So, I leave, I go into my dressing room, he go into um, um, Dove's them room. So, I guess somebody go talk to him like, hey man, you gotta squash this shit with 187, man. He, he wants your head, you know. And I did. I didn't really give a fuck. I don't care about none of that shit, you know what I'm saying, at the time. So, he comes out, he wanna talk to me, but all I remember him calling me is a bitch ass motherfucker, right? So, I take flight on him. They rush us again. They pull us apart. What happened by the time they bring you up to the New Music Seminar, the lynch mob and all of his clique got word that he had got jumped at the Celebrity Theater. But really, it was a head of fade between me and him, right? So we get to New York. They woofing the whole seminar. So we like, I know y'all don't want to get down, for real, for real. So we'll go get the homies and get down. Yeah. So we go get the homies. And it, we went right where they was at, and we got down right in the middle of the seminar, <laughs> straight like that. It had nothing to do with NWA at all. Yeah. Only thing it had to do with NWA is Easy E pumping all of us up to the first motherfucking place. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so blame uh, it on yeah. Eric, man. Rest in peace, you crazy motherfucker, you. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah. I, but he told me not to fight. But I mean, back then, telling me not to fight. Yeah. That ain't a good. That that wasn't a good look. So, so it was like a full out brawl. Like. Oh yeah, the, the dudes, you know, we tore up the whole floor. <laughs> oh, that that, 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 new music, that movie didn't show it no justice. We tore, tore up the whole eighth floor. Oh, we wow. are never welcome back to the new music. <laughs> Above the law is never welcome back. We messed up their whole seminar. Oh wow! They were never welcome back to that. They, it's funny because after we tore up the place. 30 minutes later, Sony called us and be like, you guys are going right back to L.A. tonight. 
They sent us right back. We had a showcase that night. Showcasing Living Like Hustlers. They flew us right back to L.A. Oh, wow. After that fight. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the music industry. <laughs> yeah. So, um... So, so you're at Ruthless Records, mm -hmm. and Dre's gone, everybody's mm -hmm. gone, mm -hmm. and um, tell me how, you, did you kind of step in and take kind of like Dre's spot? Yeah, I did. Like I was telling you, like I, I said before earlier, when Dre left, Eric is the one who basically put me in that position. He felt that I was Dre. I had, I had, you know, I, I had mentored under him. You know, learning how to make actual records, learning how to put everything in perspective and make the records the right way. You know, because at the time I was just a young producer and a musician and I had never made a record professionally. So when I worked with him on Living Like Hustlers and watch him do a lot of records, you know, um, a lot of NWA stuff, you know, and stuff like that, I learned that year before I came out. And then once um, Living Like Hustlers came out, I was able to do whatever I wanted to do as far as like, being able to develop and do my own sound. So Eric always knew that because he used, used to always be like, okay, you like the, you like baby Dre. You like the mirror of Dre, yeah. you know? So he put me in that position. You know, I was his liaison when Dre left. I was his go-to guy creatively if he felt like, okay, you know, should he do this? Should he do that? Should he do that? He came to me with bone. Was like, oh, I want to do this. Um, what you think? He came to me with every everything he wanted to do. He came to me with it as if I was Dre. Yeah, and you, you produced a lot. You, you did a lot of easy stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't do any Bone because they had their own, because it was Yella, it was DJ Unique, and um, Kenny McLeod who developed their sound. Gotcha. You know, which was cool because I was so busy with him, Above the Law, Cocaine. I had a heavy workload. They didn't really have a workload like I had. Yeah. And I was his liaison. I was... I had to supervise his records, supervise a cocaine record. I was working on HWA, developing stuff for him, and yeah. I had to do above the law albums. Gotcha. You know. And so. then so he he gets sick and yeah. he uh, passes mm -hmm. away. What was it like? Oh uh, man, it's terrible man. Yeah. Terrible. Worst worst moment of my life in this music industry. For real. Wow. I cannot tell you how I went from chilling with him to like 10 days later, him full blown being in the bed sick. Wow. The me and him sitting at a mixing board going over ideas for the California video to him being sick as a dog and dying. Yeah. In like a week, within 10 days, over with. Like a two week period, the craziest two weeks ever in wow. my life, you know? Because if I was to tell you, like, say, I met with Eric on a Saturday. Yeah. The following next two Saturdays was him in the hospital and him dying from AIDS like that. Wow. Nuts. Wow. So crazy that my dad called me. He said, man, I've seen a lot of people die from AIDS. I've seen a lot of stuff in my life, son. I've never seen nobody die that quick. Yeah. Need, I don't know what happened with Eric, but you might need to look into it. Did you, did you see like Lil Easy or I was watching something that they said that they were going to um, maybe uh, reopen the investigation of his father's death? Hey, I, you know, listen, man. I just, all I can say to that is still, it's like an unsolved mystery to me, man. I mean, I'm just being honest. I mean, I don't, I don't want to think it's foul play because I love the people who are involved or, you know, who are around. I had like a lot of love and respect for him, but I wouldn't doubt it. I, I can't say it was because I was kind of like in a mode to where kind of like Eric didn't tell me, but I had to remove myself from it because the fact of the things is certain things that he told me that he was trying to do. Yeah. You know, that with him not being involved would never work. Yeah. You know what I mean? It would never work. It would never work with his wife. It would never work with, you know, with the people that are, were around. It just wasn't, it didn't feel right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it was almost better. Like when, to me, I tell people this, when Easy e died, Ruthless Records died. Yeah. So I don't care how many people were still living and doing it because he was that. Yeah. And it was the ultimate. He, he, was, he was like the person to, he always told me, um, 
be about you. Do you. I'll back your play if it's what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. how he was. He never was a dude that's like, oh, it have to be like this. It's like, okay, you want to do that? Try it. Oh, you want to be this? Try it. And that's wh why the spirit that I have for him when he died, I knew Hoofless wouldn't work. Yeah. Because people will come in and they will be, oh, I'm the, I'm the CEO. I'm the record. He never tripped like that. I, you know, I'll tell you something crazy. We told him we want to do a gangster political album. It's like, how are you going to do that? It's like P.E. and N.W.A. And then you got Above the Law, Uncle Sam's Curse. Yeah. We done that. I told him that on paper. He was like, do it. See how it come out. We done the record. And he blew his, blew his mind. He the one who picked Black Superman as a single. We didn't. We was like, that's not going to work. He was like, that explains what you told me your album was going to be about. So that's what we got to lead with. That's how brilliant he was, man. But he never told me that nothing wouldn't work. He said, try it. You the music motherfucker. I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good idea. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I'm a good idea that worked, that could have worked, that could not have worked. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so I, that's, you know, so it really crushed me, man, like, far as the creative support. Yeah. Because now you, you know, I, when I came in the industry, I came in, we came into the industry with a CEO that backed our play. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, we got to get A&R now, or we got to do this, or we got to do that. Like, what's the world going to be like without a person like that? So it was dev devastating. And then I lost a dear friend yeah. on top of that. So, you know, music is, music is our life. Music is who we are. Yeah. So, you know, even though we, we say, oh, uh, both laws are business, but, you know, music is who we are. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when somebody say, okay, I'm going to back you being you. I'm not, you don't have to dress up. You don't have to do none of that. Just... Come to the studio and do you. Yeah. And it's 1989. Just come to the studio and do you. Fuck all the other shit. You know, you don't have to put no outfit on. You don't have to put no hat. You don't have to do no dance. You don't have to do nothing. Just do you. Yeah. Who does that? Not In nobody. 1989. Yeah. You know? Nobody. Yeah, it ain't no concept. Ain't no, oh, just do you. Oh, oh that's what y'all about. Y'all about hustling, getting money, uh, uh, turning up, doing whatever y'all, whatever people want to say now, you know, just to bring y'all up to speed. But that's how he was. He was like, hey, do you. Yeah. You know? Look at the brilliance, the brilliance of Easy E. You you see why Bone Thugs and Harmony work. You see why um um or the Black Eyed Peas work. Cause that's the ad band clan. That's Will and when they were young. You see why that works. The same formula, same weird quirky stuff. He sort of he saw all that. You see why above the law work. He saw that. He never told us to be nothing else but us. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it's devastating, man. I mean, Easy E is what I hate. Easy E is the reason why it's hip hop and hip hop industry today. 1988, 1989, hip hop was going all these other ways. People dancing, they in love, they this, they that, they that. He put gangster rap in a play and had a vision, had a plan, and Dre had a sound, and they had a vision with Ruthless Records. And he put the money up, and it changed the course of industry as what, what we think of today. That's Easy es play. Nobody else thought about that. West Coast took off. It wasn't none. We had a few records. We had L.A. Dream Team, the Wrecking Crew, the Dance Records, Egyptian Lover, stuff like that, if cats know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? We didn't have no industry until Ruthless Records came. Yeah. I see had a few records. We didn't have no industry until Ruthless Records came. In the, in the three years, me and Rand were talking about this. In the three years that went from when we started, and I want to say in 88 to 90, look at the records we put out. Easy does it. Straight out of Compton. No one can do it better. The Michelle A album and Living Like Hustlers. Five major in 1989. Yeah. In 90. In three years, a powerhouse. Kids from Compton. Kids from South Central, kids from Pomona. A powerhouse. Nobody saw that coming. Change the way people think about making their music in New York. Change the way people think about doing their stuff down South. Change the whole landscape.